Sorry for the slight change in setup. I thought that maybe if I set up the camera so that I can sit down and rest the chanter on this tabletop, then I would have fewer crossing noises when doing examples. Um, we shall see if that's the case. My, it might end up that I've just removed my best excuse for my crossing noises. So I'll try my best to point them out when they happen. And we'll say that this is the uh, sort of the tool time model of showing you what not to do by, by doing it myself. Um, in this video, we're going to move on to pages 15 and 16. This is the, um, is this the begin where we're continuing in chapter 3. We've kind of wrapped up our work on G Grace notes, though, you know, go back and work on them for sure. This all kind of stacks one thing on top of another. We're moving on to D Grace notes now. Um, which, once you've got G Grace notes down, you know, popping that, that top hand pointer finger up and down, D Grace notes are pretty simple, because the same thing, just with the other hand. So it's pretty simple. So I want to take a minute here just to pause and to talk a little tiny bit about um, you, you might be having a hard time with this, you might not, but a lot of students have a bit of a hard time where you, you've learned G, right, is played like this, but then the G grace note is like this. And then you've learned D, but now I'm telling you that the D grace note is like this. To some degree, our sort of standardized um, system, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, of, of uh, music notation, of course, it's like, it's like very useful, very helpful to have this, this regularized, standardized way of, of talking about music. Um, but in, when it comes to embellishments, I think we might be um, giving ourselves just a little bit of a challenge because I think a lot of people struggle with this. We, we might want to uh, disassociate a little bit, disassociate the note G from the grace note G or the note D from the D grace note, right? If we can make those two separate things. I don't sing cant rock, I wish I did, maybe someday. Um, but it's my general understanding that, you know, um, a G grace note would have a name other than G grace note. And so there wouldn't be this this sort of, this, uh, this tying together of playing a melody line G and having a G grace note. Um, try to disassociate those two things. A G grace note is something entirely different than the note G, right? So I have had some students for whom I said, let's make up a different word for G grace note, okay? We're gonna call it G grace note and they can come up with their own word. Let's say, for example, we're gonna call it a blip, right? And this is just to illustrate what I mean by this. If you're thinking to yourself, here's a G and here's a blip, right? Then as you're going along in the melody line of a, mu of, of, of a song and you see a G grace note, your brain doesn't try to follow that G grace note for the melody line, right? Say you have like an A, a G grace note, and then a low G. Your brain, if you're thinking G grace note, might try to go A, G grace note, G, right? Which is not what you want to be happening. You want your brain to be going A, G, and you're just sneaking in a tiny G grace note in between, right? And so if we think of it instead, if we just call it something totally different so we don't think G, let's call it a blip, you go A, blip, G. That's more what we're going for. Maybe that's a little intangible or ethereal, but if that, if that makes any sense, you know, in this example where we're going on to the D grace note, let's say we called the G grace note a blip and the D grace note a bleep, right? So we'd be going A, blip, G, and then we could go blip, A. I might be just talking in circles, so I'll stop with that explanation now. But just if you're having a bit of a hard time, like thinking to yourself, oh, now I need to learn like double fingering patterns for each note because I've got G and I've also got G grace note, Maybe this is a helpful exercise. Take a moment and just try to separate in your brain. Grace notes are something else. The melody line notes are something else. These are two separate things. And for the sake of convenience, we do call the note high G a G and also the grace note that happens up there a G grace note. But G grace note is one thing, G is another thing, right? And so as you learn these grace notes, try not to tie together what we're gonna do right now, the note D with the grace note D. Cool? So let's look at page 15. We've got another little diagram. We've got a, a low note A, and then the description that you're just gonna raise that pointer finger on that lower hand. If you're playing, you know, swapped around, then either way it's your lower hand. You raise that pointer finger and put it back down, and you're back at A, right? So it's just a blip from your, from your lower hand pointer finger. 
So G grace note was this. D grace note is this. Now this is, this is where it starts getting fun. Listen close, you'll be able to hear a difference, of course, right? You can imagine how cool this gets when you have a really good bagpipe player who's playing their pipes and the melody line might be doing this kind of thing, but then the grace notes are doing some other thing around the melody line. So you can listen to that melody and be like, wow, that's a beautiful melody, but you can also kind of kind of zoom in on the embellishments, on the grace notes and stuff, and they're do they're playing a whole nother melody, you know? Beep, boop, beep, boop. And as we add more and more options, you'll beep, boop, boop, stuff like that, right? So this is really exciting. You're at an exciting point in your bagpipe learning journey. So let's move on to page uh, 16, and we're gonna look at exercises 3.6, 3.7, and 3.8, all in this sitting, all in this video. But when you're done with this video, I mean, pause the video as you go as much as you need to, rewind, redo parts, but um, don't just go on to the next thing after just going through this video one time. Go back and work through these exercises on your own multiple times, okay? But first let's look at exercise 3.6. So it's just a series of low A's with D grace notes in between them, okay? Now, same with the G grace note. We don't want to have this kind of sound. We don't want to have a soft takeoff and soft landing. We don't want to be like this. We want it to be sharp and crisp. Remember that when you get onto your Highland pipes, the holes are quite a bit bigger and there's, a quite, there's quite a lot more air coming out. And so you could actually hover a finger above the, the, the hole on your Highland bagpipe chanter and you're gonna hear the pitch start bending downward. And so if you were playing D grace notes like this really close to the chanter, they are quick and it works pretty well on the practice chanter but on the Highland pipes, that is not going to work super well. That's going to come out kind of kind of flat. So you want good distance. You want to get a good height off of your practice chanter. Okay. So let's run through this line one time really slow. We'll do the grace notes really slow and open. And then we'll do it another time a little tighter. Okay. But it's a pretty simple one. So we'll just do those two times. We'll move on to the next one. So here's line 3.6, exercise 3.6. There we go. Starting right from the beginning. Ready, and. Okay, now remember that these grace notes don't have any numerical value, right? So we just barely did it, won't work because that takes up too much space in the song. So we're gonna tighten that up. Instead of, we're gonna go. Still getting a good amount of height off the chanter, okay? Here we go. Ready, and. Okay, pause, rewind, or just pause and redo it yourself a few times, then we'll move on to the next line. So here we are in exercise 3.7. We're on C, okay? And we're just going to play a series of eight C's with a D grace note in between each one. Okay? So still kind of simple, but we're holding a different finger pattern. As you focus on these grace notes, try to be aware of your fingers. Often, whether we're on the A or a C or anything really, um, you'll end up, because you're focusing on those grace notes, you'll end up squeezing the chanter harder and harder and harder. Rest it on your knee or on a tabletop or something. Okay? So that your fingers are relaxed. Here we go with exercise 3.7. We're gonna uh, just go right into the grace notes being a little more tight this time since we've tightened them up using three point, exercise 3.6. So here we go. One, two, ready, and. Okay. Pause and go over that one a few more times. Then we'll move on to exercise 3.8 which the melody line now is finally going to move a little bit. So we're going to go A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. But in between each note, we've got a D grace note, which it gets a little funky because moving that ring finger independently 
is a little weird anyway. Adding to it, also moving the pointer finger, it's gonna be a little funky. Okay, yeah. so let's give it a try. So we'll do it really slow. We'll go A, degrace note to B, degrace note to A. So you're gonna have a minute to sort of sit on each note to kind of get ready for that next degrace note and move. Okay, here we go. Just kind of move with me on this one. Here we go. At any point during that line, your fingers did something like this. Don't worry, that happens to everybody. There's like this weird signal thing going on in your brain where you're like, move the ring finger by itself, but sometimes not by itself. Also do this little blip and hold the ring finger up while the pointer finger goes back down. Just slow it down even more. In fact, let's do it together even slower, okay? We're gonna just open everything way, way up. We'll go A, we'll lift that um, that D grace note finger, and then as it's coming down, and it's about to make contact with the chanter, we'll lift up the ring finger to the B. And then we'll lift that D grace note finger, and as it's coming down, about to touch the chanter, the ring finger also comes down and they touch right together. Okay, let's do it really slow and open here. Do that a few more times, real slow and open like that. Maybe don't look at the whole line, just look at the first two notes, that A to the B, okay? And you can see how if we go from really open and just start closing and closing and closing that D grace note, smaller and smaller and smaller, we get a progression like this. Okay, so go ahead and just do that as much as you need to until you're feeling pretty comfortable. Then come back and we'll move on.